Will he lose his job? Does his mother really like me? Why don't the children show more affection? Do I have bad breath? That's worry. Worse yet, it's anxiety. The difference between worry that's deserved, that's a real, something really there, and anxiety where you, you worry about something that may or may not be anything, is very indistinguishable very often. They're the same ghosts that haunt everybody. They haunt you, and they haunt your husband, and they haunt me, and they, they haunt everybody. In a minute, we'll try and scramble those ghosts. My brother-in-law worried about everything. From the time he was this high, worried about everything. And then one day, he was sitting in a chair, and he was nine, and he was terribly depressed. His head was in his hands, and father said to him, Herbert, what are you worrying about? I can't think of a thing that should be bothering you. He said, yes, father, I'm worrying because I don't have anything to worry about. That's pretty close to anxiety. You don't know what you're worried about. A lot of people just worry. Then there are people who have the kind of personalities that, that enjoy worry. These we won't, we'll put those aside. But let's talk about anxiety and worry that you have. Have you ever noticed that you have a tendency to go in circles, like in a squirrel cage? You start here and you say, now, well, this is what's happening with my job, and this is the person who's you know, pressuring me from uh, another place, and this is, will he give me uh, a raise? And if I don't get the raise, I've got that mortgage to pay, and I've got this, and, and uh, this is what's the matter with my job. Now, he's pressuring me from behind, and, and he wants something that I haven't got in the way of uh, information, education, and uh, how am I going to pay the mortgage, and what am I going to, and then next day, this is what's worrying me about my job. You don't go anywhere. You just go around and around and around, and sometimes there's little sparks that shoot off, and the mortgage suddenly goes, I have to pay for Janie's teeth because her teeth are, I haven't got the things on yet, but, you know, in two years I'm going to have to, so now you've got the mortgage and the, and the uh, orthodontia to pay, and then you worry, and supposing something happens to my wife, you know, uh, and this is how it, it begins to, to go like this, and all of a sudden you have an upset stomach and your heart starts to beat, and uh, you didn't get anything out of it. You didn't get anything constructive. So uh, let's go back and take a look at, at worry. Worry comes to everyone. We all have problems. Nobody escapes, and I don't care whether you're as rich as Croesus. I don't care whether you have wonderful families and if everybody loves you. Everybody sometimes has worry. This acts on all the glands in the body. It acts on your heart and your blood pressure. The way to get rid of tension that mounts like this is to do something. All right, let's say that there's nothing you can do about the thing you're worrying about at the present moment. The thing that I do, and I'm not alone, I know a lot of other people who do it, is get some very vigorous work like cleaning the house from top to bottom or uh, cleaning the garage or something like this. And somehow or other, the mere fact of being able to put everything in order right there, that one thing, get it in order, makes you feel a little bit better. Uh, that's one way of handling it. Something physical gets you away from the house and into something that's very... Uh, a game, if you like. For instance, some people love to play uh, basketball. All right, go down to the Y and play basketball and forget uh, for a minute this worry, this anxiety over which you have no control. There are other things you can do uh, that are a little less spectacular, a little less uh, vigorous. You can look at somebody else who is really in a problem and help them. You can work, uh, go to, an, for instance, when I was little, I was in an orphanage. And, um, Orphanages are terrible places, no matter how kind the people are, because there were 40 little girls. We were all six and seven. And we were on long, long lines, and we went everywhere in long lines. And they got us up with a bell, and we sat down at the table to a bell, and food was bad, and we got up with a bell, and, and uh, there was nobody to love us, and we were really so lonesome. Well, there are loads of little people who would just love to hear from you, would just love to have you come and, and let them feel that you're their auntie, you're their 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 grandmother, you're their friend, it doesn't matter. Go and help there some. Go and help some uh, retarded youngsters. Uh, help somebody who needs a job, who really hasn't got the brain power to do something tremendous. Get them a job and help them in the job for a while. Do something for somebody else. As far as you yourself are concerned, the thing that I found was very helpful is sometimes to write down all the problems on a piece of paper. Then on the other side, write down all the good things that doesn't help with the problems. But every once in a while, when you look at this list, you can say, I guess it's not quite so bad. And then there's one thing else that you can do, and that's wait for it to happen. See, most of the things we worry about don't ever happen. 
we catch hold of a seed and we build it and we build it and we build it. It's just like that thing, first he hasn't got the money for the mortgage and suddenly he's got the kid with the teeth uh, that may never have to have the orthodonture and we've got years to wait, but he's already paying the bills or wondering how. And then he's wondering, um, and the next thing you get is Janie's already nine. She's going to have teeth fixed at 12, and uh, I've got to put her through college. And, and pretty soon he's in a sweat. Today is today. Tomorrow may be something entirely different. One of the nice things about the bomb, everybody's talking about the bomb has such a terrible effect on everybody. They don't want to plan for the future because who knows whether there's a future. Well, who knows? So maybe you'll just take care of today and stop worrying about three years from now. You can't take care of that. But you can take care of you today. You can take care of your family today. You can take care of just this minute. If you can't go any further than just this minute, look, look right in the, in the camera at me. Are you looking? We are here. It's this minute. Now, think of one thing to do that's constructive. Forget the worries. Forget the sick person. Forget the hospital bills. Forget the whole business. One constructive thing, what can you do? Now think. Never mind whether you're going to do it. What can you do? I'm asking. All right, now write it down. Now, as soon as this is closed, you get on the phone, look through the yellow pages, and find out whether there's something under that that is listed that you can call up and say, can you use a volunteer? Or start looking around through the, the town where is that thing that you want to do to be found? All right? Now you know what to do. Leave the worries alone. They'll take care of themselves. Get started on something constructive.